Welcome to Kuyu Live. My name is Sean Ayers. I head up product development here at, uh, at Kuyu and uh, stepping in for Jason today. So Jason's down in Southern California right now chasing uh, desert bighorn sheep. He's got his eyes on a really big one. So uh, check in on his Instagram page. He's been up uh, updating there uh, pretty regularly. And so uh, wishing him the best of luck uh, on that hunt. So today I want to go over uh, a couple of products that we are have just launched, and then I want to go back to the binocular harness system that we launched a couple weeks ago. We made updates for 2018, and just talk about the bino harness system in general, and then the changes we made, and just go into a little more detail about that because uh, there's some really nice nice changes uh, that were made for for 2018. So uh, we'll be taking your questions uh, at the end, and so please uh, feel free to start feeding those questions in. McCade's going to take a look at them, and we'll get uh, get those questions answered also in the course of this. So let's dive right into the uh, uh, Peloton 240 vest, which uh, the Peloton series has been uh, – a really, really nice addition to our, our product line. And in particular, this uh, the Peloton 240 fabric is a fleece fabric that has a bonded wind resistant layer in between the two layers of fabric and the we've had a, a jacket and a hooded jacket and a beanie uh since for a while a couple of years now and um vest is going to be a great addition to that series and uh let's just really quickly i want to talk about uh the bonding technology it's proprietary to Torre in japan it's it's a bonding layer. So most uh, fabric manufacturers, if they're trying to make wind resistance into a garment, they have to put in an actual membrane or an actual layer in between the two layers of fabric. And this is very similar to the construction of rain gear, for instance. And when you put a full-on layer in between and sandwich it in the laminate of the fabrics, uh, you make that, that fabric very heavy. It's crunchy. It typically will also not breathe well enough to function um, well as an active active insulation piece. And the thing that's different about this fabric is they figured out a way to add that wind resistance into the bonding layer between the two layers of fabric. You've got a fleece back and you've got a face fabric. And that bonding layer in between allows just enough air permeability that it can allow your perspiration to escape but also gives you wind resistance that's equivalent to um, most soft shell jackets. In fact, it's better than a lot of soft shell jackets that are on the market uh, in terms of wind resistance, but an incredibly quiet, quiet face fabric. So a vest like this, um, it's my go-to during hunts like uh, um, early archery elk hunts, for instance. Uh, days when you know you're going to be in a t-shirt during the middle of the day, 60, 70 degrees, but the mornings start off and you know, high 30s to, to 40s, um, having a vest on uh, over a shirt or two will keep you warm enough. Uh, you've got that wind resistance there, but you can be very active. And so um, this vest at 8.3 ounces, so incredibly lightweight, great price point on it. Uh, I'll just go over a couple of the features uh, that are found on this vest. We've got uh, you got dual hand pockets on here that are set up high enough that it's not going to interfere with the with the hip belt. You've got an athletic cut to this um, vest, in my opinion, and all of us here are best worn, you know, fairly tight over over a base layer. Uh, we've got a new construction for the beard guard on this style and this is what's called a kissing welt and it's symmetrical layers of fabric on the backside that touch each other and so instead of having a big flap as a beard guard now you've got this nice symmetrical beard guard built in there so that's new on the peloton 240 vest so great addition to the lineup uh i i've had one for a couple years that i've been using and, and absolutely absolutely love it so Let's move on to, to product number two, the uh, Supernown Pro Pant, and I've got that uh, hanging up over here. So with the Supernown series, we had new fabric technology, lighter weight fabrics became available to us, so we saw an opportunity with that whole series to, to split it into two, where we took our original Superdown, used lighter weight fabrics, kept the same fill amount, but made a uh, the Superdown Ultra series, so cut the weight down. Um, and 
kept the same amount of fill as our original Super Down, but made an ultralight series uh, of Super Down products. And that opened up an opportunity to make a more durable, more heavily insulated uh, set of insulation pieces and calling this the Super Down Pro Series. We launched the jacket uh, a few weeks ago and it's been a great success. Now we've got the, the pants showing up. So the Super Down Pro Series actually has double the amount of fill of the Ultra Series and of the old, the old Super Down pieces. So you've got an incredible amount of, of down in there and we only use the best quality down that we can source. It's, eight, it's over 850 fill power. It's treated with a water resistant coating and this is actually on the clusters of, of down themselves and that water resistant coating, it, um, it'll help you if you ever accidentally get your down pieces wet, uh, they, you know, they won't ball up, they'll keep their insulation uh, capabilities. And also it's really good with, with a piece like this, there's just a lot of perspiration or moisture that comes off of your body during regular usage, especially if you happen to be wearing this, say inside your sleeping bag to add to the temperature rating of your sleeping bag and sleeping in it. It's just a lot of moisture that comes out and having a water resistant down is really critical in those situations to, so that the down isn't sucking up moisture during usage. And so the, the Super Down Pro Series, in particular, we chose a heavier weight 30 denier fabric for the outer. Uh, with these pieces, we knew guys were going to be using them more as outerwear pieces. So increase the durability of the outer fabrics, uh, increase the sizing so that it, you can more easily get it on over the top of other layers. And also, so yeah, so the sizing was increased, you put it on over the top of other layers, and then with the pant in particular, guys are sitting in rocks, kneeling on rocks, wearing it as an outerwear piece. We took the next step and actually made even, used even heavier weight fabrics at the seat and at the knees and the cuff area. So this is actually a 70 by 80 denier nylon at these locations. So you've got really heavy duty fabrics at these high wear areas. There's 3.2 ounces of down in here. You've got a total garment weight. 16 ounces. This is a full tear off style, which is really important. You've got Velcro tabs up here that and full side zips. It engages there. And so you can you don't have to take your boots off. You don't have to take your pants off to get this on. You can you can actually just put it over the top of everything, attach at the waist and zip them shut. So that's the Super Down Pro Pant. We have a Super Down hooded jacket that goes with this. Uh, you, Honestly, for me, anytime that there's snow on the ground, uh, temperatures are getting down near freezing, this is my go-to. Uh, earlier season hunts, when I'm really concerned about weight, uh, Super Down Ultra all the way, I'm using that. But, but when there's snow on the ground for your late season hunts, Super Down Pro is the way to go. And if you want that extra durability also to be able to take a little more abuse, I mean, this this got heavier weight fabrics also. So that's the Super Down Pro. And then... Let's move on to the uh, the binocular harness, which uh, we made some updates for 2018, and we launched those a couple weeks ago, and, but I wanted to just go over some of the changes that were made and just talk a little bit more about the, uh, the whole system in general. So the design intent with our binocular harness system, we wanted to keep the weight down as much as possible. We wanted a system that was fit nice tight to your chest, didn't have any sag or bounce in it, and we accomplished that. And this 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 product has been one of our best sellers for years. Uh, in making any changes to this in 2018, honestly, we didn't want to screw it up. Uh, we wanted to keep, we wanted added performance, add, add functionality, and cr increase the... Uh, just the capabilities of the whole system without uh, without really changing it in in really significant ways. So um, I'm going to throw this this is my own personal version. In order to put this on, you want to detach this side release buckle. You put your arm through there, this over the top of your head. Clip in on the side right there. Make sure all these straps are straight. So the system is designed to be worn high and tight to your chest. Uh, the binoculars are actually attached 
to these straps. If it's not worn tight to your chest, uh, this whole system can sag when you take the binoculars out. But we designed this system to... We didn't want it to sag. We didn't want it to balance. There's no elastic in any of the harness system. So, I mean, this is incredibly stable on your chest at this location. It's comfortable. Uh, you can be very active in it. Uh, during testing of this product years ago, I mean, I'd go out for, you know, three to five mile runs with this on just to test it. And, and literally, you can wear this the whole time. It, it stays that uh, that attached to your, to your chest. We've got a... Uh, the, the opening system moves in a forward direction like this. So we've got, um, it's very easy to open this up. Your binoculars are easily accessible. Bring them up to your eyes. One-handed operation. Uh, if you're, you can leave this down. If, say, you're stocking in on an animal, for instance, and you want to just leave this in the downward position, you can easily get the, the binoculars. You can just set them down like that. In your back, and you've got, um, like I said, one-handed operation. You can keep a bow or a rifle in your hand, and you can open and close this very easily with with one hand. So, in terms of the updates that we made for 2018, uh, I've got another system right here. Where during warm weather, where this system touches your your back and your chest, the it's easy to build up a lot of moisture and sweat in those locations. So we replace the fabric with a spacer air mesh. And this we've used this fabric successfully in our uh, pack system for years. So it's breathable material. It allows good airflow. It's got an antimicrobial coating. And it's used on the back of the harness. And then it's also used on the back of the binocular holder itself. So those changes. We improved the overall shape of the lid with uh, put this at a more of a 90 degree angle so that it would more easily catch on the back side of your eye cups and just a, a hint for you guys that are running any of our older systems this this upper lid is actually moldable you can take this and you can you can mold it by hand and give it a slightly different shape that better fits over the eye cups of your binoculars so don't don't hesitate to do that uh, it'll definitely allow it to function better Probably one of the changes that I'm most excited about is we actually took the, this is a two-part construction for this, this piece, and this internal foam insert, we made that higher and separated it from the outer fabric, and that made the, the opening and closing and the locking into place of the lid just work so much better than, than it, it did in the past. Um, it locks down very nicely into place, and you can... You like said this is one-handed operation, locks down really well into place, like that. So, the final change we made for 2018 is we wanted a way that you could attach accessory items onto the binocular harness, but we didn't want to change the overall size of it. We wanted it to still be able to function the same as it had before. So, we figured out that just a simple hook and loop loop system on the bottom gave us a great amount of flexibility to to add a rangefinder holder at this location or we've got a secondary accessory a ammo holder that can go in at that location that'll hold six bullets just simply attaches to the hook and loop right here uh, you, during the during the design process of this uh, we certainly had our concerns that hook and loop would be would be in too noisy uh, I'm a dedicated bow hunter. I've used this system for three years now, and honestly, I mean, I, I've had no problems with it at all. It's been uh, incredibly quiet. You really don't take a lot of shots to the gut as you're as you're out hunting. You uh, this this system, it it's quiet. It's it's tightly attached there, and um, you know, function wise, you can be holding the bow in your hand. Get get your rangefinder out. If you use the, we sell a lanyard. You can just drop that to your side if you want. You put it back easily, one-handed, close it up. So, yeah, the system system works incredibly well. Uh, and like I said, just the, yeah, it's it's a very secure attachment. I think you guys would be really surprised at, at how well this system works here. And it's nice that you don't have anything hanging off the sides. It literally feels like your old binocular harness system with, with um, the nice tight profile. So... 
Just to clarify, we actually now sell two different rangefinder holders. We have this new one that's called the uh, rangefinder holder HL for hook and loop. And this one only fits on this, this 2018 binocular harness that has the, the loop material on the bottom. We do sell a, a rangefinder holder that we launched previously fits onto the side of the, the binocular harness. And it's, this works incredibly well also. Actually, the, uh, you can take this lid. I don't have a rangefinder in here right now, but you can fold that lid back and easily just put that, uh, that rangefinder into, into place, have it easily accessible, drop it right back down in there as you're stocking in on an animal. This is actually designed to be ambidextrous, so it can go on this other side of the, of the holder. And this is compatible with any of our previous binocular harnesses that we've sold. And Sean, maybe maybe you can turn around, turn that around and show how it connects on the back. Okay. Can you zoom in on that? Okay. So the side release buckle will actually go through these two 10 millimeter webbing loops. And then there's a plastic part that is included with this and pinching that over the the hypalon piece right here really secures it to the side of the of the binocular holder itself so there's instructions that come along with this like i said this is our standard rangefinder holder with this webbing loop system it's also designed to go on the hip belt of a pack or it could go on your on your belt with your of your pants so um I'll run this system. I, I run my rangefinder below my binoculars here, but I carry one of these. Uh, I actually carry a compact camera in it behind the hip belt of of my pack, and so that uh, this system works well. Not only, I mean, you you could have you could run two of these plus another one down here if you had GPS you want to carry. I know some guys have retrofitted this; so they can even slide their cell phone inside of it. Uh, there are lots of different options and lots of different ways that you can use our two different rangefinder holders. And once again, we also have, we call this the ammo holder HL, and it attaches right to the bottom as well. And then you got six bullets that are, that are really easily accessible. So one other thing, and I actually don't have the part here, but each one of the uh, binocular harnesses ships with a an elastic piece, so it's a piece of webbing with elastic on it that you can remove this whole bino holder and you can attach it in line. If you, if you undo these two buckles, you can attach that elastic piece in line and it allows your binoculars basically to just, you know, sit freely on your chest or you can put them inside the elastic and, and keep them constrained that way. And that's a really nice system that I don't think enough guys actually take advantage of. Uh, if I'm going out to the bow range, for instance, I don't want to carry this, this whole vinyl holder here. Um, you know, I'll, I'll run it that way. Uh, sometimes if I'm, I have it underneath rain gear, for instance, uh, and I, I'll actually remove this whole holder and I'll just use that elastic piece. So that's an overview of the bino harness system uh, and the changes that we made for, for 2018. Uh, I think at this point we can start to take some questions. Let's do it. Okay. We'll dive right in. Uh, we had a lot of questions come in today from both Instagram and Facebook. First one from Instagram from Flatlander Outdoors. He asked, will, the sol will there be solids coming out in the Alpine pants at all? You know, we did have solids in the Alpine pants, but I believe we've sold through them. So I'm not sure that there's any more that are coming in available, but uh, call into customer service. They might be able to, to help you out and answer that question. Uh, this one came in from J.Glowaski, and he asked, would a hooded vest be weird, maybe a removable hood? Not at all. Actually, we've gotten that request uh, before on a vest, and um, and I get it. I mean, we've got, uh, you know, some kind of lightweight uh, hoods are nice on, on pieces. Um, we've got... Our Merino 210, for instance, has a hood on it, and I know our Peloton 97, those those lighter weight base layers, have hoods on them. And, and in those cases, yeah, those um, a lightweight hood is a very very functional thing. And, and we have heard that request before. Don't have it in the works right now, but um, I'll put it on the list. It's it's an interesting idea to to look into. Awesome, Phil Davis 54966 asked recommendations on Peloton product care. Machine wash, hand wash, okay to put in the dryer. 
I sure put all mine in the dryer. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, machine wash it, uh, warm wash, uh, warm dry. Just you know, use scent free uh, detergent. Um, all, I usually just buy the the normal like free and clear type of detergent that you can use for high efficiency washing machines, and and it works great. I mean, we do sell uh, a tech wash product from Nick Wax that um, that honestly is probably even better, but. To be honest with you, I mean, it's, yeah, just using those regular scent fee products seems to work well. Uh, this one came in from Ezzy Ben just now. Uh, asked, any solids coming in the Superdown Pro line? Uh, we do. We are starting to put those on, on orders. Uh, look at it, uh, 2018. Um, not exactly sure when at this point, but, uh, but definitely um, that's been something that's been a popular request with us. And so we, we hear you. Seth McCrory asked, when will the new Bino harness be out? It actually launched a couple weeks ago. So anything that's been shipping over the last few weeks uh, is, is the new version. And, um, and the ammo holder is available and the, the rangefinder holder HL. And then don't forget, we've got also got um, the lanyards that uh, attach those electronics. So don't forget those also. Uh, Jeremy Dawkin asked, what other accessories are being worked on for the hook and loop attachment of the bino harness? Bear spray holster by chance? <laughs> I, saw, I, got, I, saw, I got your email, Jeremy. Thank you. Uh, that's actually a really good idea. Uh, yeah. I'm going to look into, you know, sizing and, and whether that would, that would fit at that location. But, uh, yeah, thank you for the, thank you for the email. And, and uh, I appreciate uh, all your product feedback that you've given me over the years, Jeremy. Uh, C Musky twenty five asked any more possible hats in the flex fit style. Uh, we've got a bunch of them in in development right now. That uh, look early twenty eighteen uh, is when we'll have some more options coming out. Absolutely. Another question from Jeremy. Uh, he asked what would what would be the difference between the Peloton two forty vest and the Super Down Ultra vest. So w- the Peloton two forty vest is definitely going to be. Uh, a totally different, um, you know, temperature range and use. So this is going to be a very good active use piece. Uh, the the Superdown Ultra Vest uh, more as an insulation type of piece. It has to be pretty cold. If you're being very, if you're active in that in that Superdown Ultra Vest, it's going to be it's going to be warm. You're going to sweat in it a lot. But uh, with this um, the Act Wind the the bonding technology they have in here, there's just the right amount of airflow that you can actually be really active in in the Peloton 240 pieces, and uh, and be comfortable. Uh, this question came in from Mark the Cook. It's a question we get often, so I think we should cover it again. Okay. Are you ever going to come out with a California marsh camo for duck hunting? <laughs> So uh, we duck hunt. I mean, we're in the middle of the biggest migration area in, in just about the whole country here, and, and we're all avid duck hunters here. We we use our camo uh, for for duck hunting, uh, you know, from early season to late. I'll normally trend toward bias camo, especially as the as the season gets later, uh, and and things start to the green goes away, and you start getting uh, you know burnt tulies and things like that. But uh, your early season, the Verde twos great when you've got uh, the, the green tulies out there and the, but our current camo works great um yeah so that's uh, and our system works amazingly well for for duck hunting i certainly none of us around here feel the need to uh to do anything different awesome this question came in from rack and track and we did cover it earlier but maybe we should uh, show it again okay uh they said you should think about making the harness with some breathable mesh on the back <laughs> Yeah, so great idea. <laughs> and so we've got, uh, for the 2018 update, we've got air mesh on the back. It's got an antimicrobial coating. It's got good airflow to it. Definitely won't get as sweaty in this as, as our previous version. Previously, we just had the, the face fabric, the soft shell face fabric here. And, um, and this breathes a lot better than it did previously. Awesome. Um, McFly's life asked, where is the Giru stove jack? Need one for my mountain star. So the stove jack is available for purchase right now. Uh, and so any guys that, uh, went through the, the Giru process, uh, purchased the summit refuge three P stove jack is available. Uh, go and grab it. Uh, it works great. It's, uh, nice. Um, we'll do more on the, on the summit refuge three P in the future. 
but uh, yeah, that that tent launched last week, and uh, and um, it's it's an amazing product that's got a lot of flexibility using a lot of different ways. So I'm excited to talk to you more about that in the future. But stove jack absolutely available right now. Go grab it. And just to, just to clarify, Blaze here, um, I heard McCade say uh, that that customer was asking about his Mountain Star tent. Um, will the stove jack work for the Mountain Star tent, or is that something maybe that customer is not? Oh, okay. Thank you for clarifying, Blake. Yeah, no, the uh, the stove jack is specifically designed to fit into the zippered opening on the Summit Refuge 3P tent that we just launched last week. And they've got a different shape to the to the zipper. Specifically, the, the Summit Refuge 3P has a zipper that's got an arc in it at the top, and it's got dual sliders, and so you actually zip down the top slider and put that stove jack into place. So it's specifically designed for that. We're looking at, you know, other, you know, tents that we're designing in the future to, to have that capability in, in other, you know, season tents that would be used in later seasons. But uh, good question. Thanks for the, thanks for the clarification. Please. Uh, the, <clears throat> excuse me. This question came in from Chris Gantz and he asked, are you planning on doing bibs or any type of full one piece suits in the future? Uh, we've got a lot of things that we're working on right now, including some some really really amazing uh, you know cold weather pieces. Um, lots of different options. Uh, no timelines right now for release. We're we're testing uh, different pieces right now. So, uh, but there's um, we've got a lot in the works. Awesome. Dob Forty just asked, curious, what was the reason for discontinuing Verde 1.0? We just. Uh, we felt like the as we were starting to work on uh, changes to to the camo pattern. Um, honestly, it we wanted to take that that pattern and make it more of a macro pattern. So that was the initial inspiration there. We wanted to make those um, objects larger, and in that process, we started playing around with rounding some of the shape, uh, some of the edges on the shape, take away that digital look to some extent, and and then add in that other that gray color to it and. Honestly, I mean, it's uh, we we all loved it, and uh, and our customers so far have, have loved it too. So, uh, um, not the Verde two, that that larger breakup, those larger blocks do break up your pattern a little bit better at distance. But I mean, Verde one was an amazing, amazing camel also. So, uh, but just in that process uh, of trying to trying to update things, we're always trying to improve. Um, and make things better, and uh, felt like we came up with uh, with something that, that we liked uh, better, and went with it. Awesome! So I think we got time for just a couple more, so we'll cover those and then wrap okay. it up. Uh, Mondoville asked, "Ever going to expand the Kenai line?" Yeah, we've got um, we've got some other pieces in the works right now, and and some some of the cold weather pieces actually use uh, some of that that three D FX material in them as well. So uh Kenai line's been amazing. Uh it's really nice with that without those pieces to have that um that quiet touch and that that active you know insulation that the breathes really well, super quiet. So um yeah we we love the Kenai line. We use it a lot and uh and we've got um you know improvements in the works for for that whole line and and new pieces also. Awesome. Uh, last question came in from Peter Wills, and he asked, how durable is the Peloton 240 vest compared to the Guide DCS vest, abrasion and snag resistance-wise? Honestly, the, the, the Guide vest is going to be more durable than the Peloton 240. This is a very, this is a very soft face fabric here, and, and the Guide, if you're, if you're concerned about durability, go with the Guide. Uh, this is, the, is a durable material, but this is designed really as a lightweight, real, very quiet piece. And so, um, great question. But if that's your main concern, the guide is going to be more durable than this. Okay, I lied. We're going to do one more because it's a <laughs> question that comes up a lot. Uh -huh. uh, Chris Acock asked, can you recommend a stove for use with the 3P Refuge Shelter? Yeah, and there's, there's a lot of different uh, models on the market. And the primary one that I've used is uh, by Titanium Goat, and it's their small Wi-Fi stove. But honestly, any of the, any of the small stoves that are made for backpacking should work in that in in that tent uh the the stove jack itself has a two and a half inch diameter opening in it which is pretty standard for those um, those stove pipes it can be made even bigger um, also most of those stove pipes are wrap style so you can actually change the diameter of them to some extent but uh, yeah any of the really small backpacking uh, ultralight stoves will work in in that tent 
Is that it for questions? Yep. Okay. I just want to say, guys, uh, thank you very much uh, for tuning in, and uh, I'll hit you up again like I did last time. I mean, guys, this is a product-driven company. I love to love to hear your feedback. We're always trying to improve what we do. Uh, if you send in your comments, uh, you know, suggested improvements, things like that, to customer service. I mean, I, I read it all, and so uh, and so. Thank you very much for um, your support of Kuyu and for your time today. And uh, yeah, it's fun being here. Thank you.